Straight? Is it straight? Is it still doing this? Is it straight? Because it was. Oh, you know what? It's loose.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, glory to to God, glory in the heart. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Numbers. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. He gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. So they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of, the chosen, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let us read the appointed portion of the psalm responsively by whole verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them to you, to give them their food in You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven 
There came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of our one holy God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, in case you missed it today, Pentecost is all about the Holy Spirit. Every reading has the Spirit in it. The account of Moses and the 70 elders, Jesus breathing the Spirit on the gathered disciples, and the account of the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, the, center is in, the Spirit is in center stage for all of those. Now, in the baptism narratives of Mark, Matthew, and Luke, the Spirit is said to have descended on Jesus in the form of a dove. And that's the image we see in most religious art, and in icons, and in illuminations, and in uh, stained glass windows here. But I've never really bought the idea of the Spirit as a gentle white dove. That's not my experience. In my own experience God, of God, the Spirit is much more active. The word translated spirit in the scriptures, which is pneuma in Greek, which means breath or wind, and ruach in Hebrew, which actually means the desert wind, those are more accurate for me. The image of a desert wind kicking up sand and dust is closer to what I experience with the Holy Spirit. A Kamal Delis Benedictine once wrote, Pentecost reminds us that Christ's spirit is not mild or temperate, but a disrupting force, a caring love that disconcerts and unsettles the systems of this world, redefining power from the inside out and from the bottom up. The systems of this world don't particularly like disruption and redefinition of power. Disruption often leads to the condemnation and silencing and alienation of the disruptors. The church as a system in this world has not been immune for this reaction either. Over the centuries, there have been movements within the Western church that have emphasized the presence of the spirit in dynamic ways. Many of these have been repressed by the institutional church sometimes because of unorthodox theology, but just as often because the manifestations of the Spirit have been outside the control of the church leadership. The disrupting force of the Spirit has, over the centuries, led the church to try to put limits on the Spirit, to domesticate and keep the Spirit in bounds. But in spite of this, the Holy Spirit remains a wild wind that blows where it will. The description of Pentecost we hear today in Acts shows the Spirit not as some gentle breeze, but as a roaring gale blowing through the whole house, making noise and bringing fire in its wake. It's a wind out of our control. And we like to be in control. At least I do. Lack of control of life around me is quite uncomfortable. And I would imagine that the disciples gathered in the upper room on that day of Pentecost felt very much out of control as the Spirit came on them in power. Suddenly, this group of very ordinary folks was thrust into a crowd from all over the world. Yet the Spirit gave them what to say, and they were understood. Being outside their comfort zone is a mild way to put it. Now, most of the time, our experience of the Spirit isn't as dramatic as the day of Pentecost. And it's true that not everything that makes us uncomfortable and leaves us feeling out of control is from the Spirit. So how do we distinguish the action of God's Spirit from the other confusing things in life? This is where the ancient practice of discernment comes in. The word discernment is used a lot these days. It's kind of a catchword in some circles. And it's sometimes confused with the process of decision making. 
Now, while they're related, the two processes are different. Where decision-making is usually choosing a course of action that makes sense in practical and logical terms. Discernment is the practice of sifting through thoughts and feelings and actions and trying to determine where God is in this situation. And authentic discernment, unlike decision-making, is never done in isolation, off by myself, but it's done in community. Now, at any given time, the particular community might be just me and my spiritual director, but that's always in the context of the wisdom of the whole church. Practical things like pros and cons lists can help in discernment, but they shouldn't be taken for it by themselves. Discernment is sitting in the presence of God and asking what voices, what courses of action, what decisions bring more life. Sometimes we're only able to discern the movement of the Spirit in hindsight. I suspect that was true for the disciples in the Pentecost event. I know there have been situations in my own life where everything was feeling like chaos, and it was only later when the action sort of died down that I've been able to recognize the Holy Spirit of God at work. We need to look for the effects of whatever is blowing around in our lives, and we all have things blowing around in our lives at one time or another. Where the Spirit of God is, there will be gifts of the Spirit, given for the common good, not for our use alone. Is what is happening leading to more love, more life? Is being out of our comfort zone bringing insight and leading to more loving service? Are we as individuals and as a community here at St. John's embracing the movement of the Spirit, or are we in fear trying to tame it, domesticate, and control it? Those are all big questions. And the long green season after Pentecost gives us plenty of time to consider them. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God.
Sisters and brothers, peace be with you. Let us pray to our merciful Lord, responding to our Savior and our God with have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, you have given your church the gift of your Holy Spirit. May that same Spirit comfort and strengthen us as we proclaim your resurrection to the world. Our Savior and our God. God of wisdom, teach and counsel the leaders of the nations. May this world be filled with justice and peace. Our Savior and our God. God, our provider, you have given us this pleasant earth as a goodly heritage. May we use its resources wisely and always according to your purpose. Our Savior and our God. All-knowing God, raise up for this community people who will stand and voice your truth. May we be led by you on good paths of life. Our Savior and our God. Merciful God, you are a strong refuge for those in trouble. Protect all those who suffer various trials. Reveal yourself to those who struggle to believe in you. Make all your people glad by the living hope that is found in you. We pray especially for those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Our Savior and our God. God of life, may the dying and the dead rest in hope. Give us faith that you do not abandon anyone, even to the grave. And preserve us for the great inheritance you give us through the resurrection of your Son from the dead. Our Savior and our God. Our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace. <laughs> morning. Looking out on this sea of red, thank all of you for, for wearing red today and red in what you're wearing. It's a little like looking at, out at a pep rally. <laughs> all, these, all these reds, it's wonderful. We do have a few announcements and let me find them. Here we go. Okay, next week is Trinity Sunday. We'll be having a baptism. The service, the 10 o'clock service, will be out of doors, out there. And we also are having a parish picnic after the service. So be sure and come. We do need some folks to help set up and clean up before and after the service. So if you're able to do that, please contact Pam Hovey and uh, let her know that you're able to help with that. It would be very much appreciated. We'd also appreciate it if you would fill out the spring survey that you found in the e-news and that is on, in paper form. It's on the, um, the table by the entrance to the parking lot. Please fill one of those out, each person, each adult, and let me know what you're thinking, what you're interested in. We're going to use the results of this survey as a way of planning for adult formation for the coming year. So if we don't know, we can't plan it. So let us know. Also, the Wild John Club is starting again on the 5th of June. Um, and it is at Matoska State Park. They gather at 6. 
There'll be a little grilling and then out on the water and then closing with Compline later on. And so um, come to any part of that that attracts you. It's a great community event every Monday. And finally, we are going to be um, restoring the Common Cup, the usage of the Common Cup here at St. John's this summer. There'll be more information about that and how to do it and all that. But there will be communion in the Common Cup up at the altar. Down here, we will still have the personal communion cups for those who prefer it, because we know that some people really, really are not wild about the Common Cup yet. And so we will have a, a Eucharistic minister and someone giving out bread here as well. So there'll be many more instructions on that as we, uh, as we go along. And you'll hear more about it next week from Art, I'm sure. And Margaret, is there anything else? No, nope, I think we got it. Okay, that's it. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself a sacrifice and offering to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting people of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. 
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us receive the feast. Hallelujah. The table of bread and wine is now made ready. It is a table of company with Jesus and all those who love him. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been to this table often and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. The gifts of God for the people of God.
standing as you're able, let us pray. The deacon always shows me where I'm supposed to read. There we go. Thank you. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. We will be doing verses 1, 2, Now our service begins. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks. 